Um, we need to learn how to do multi-step problems. Um, and when we do these, we're going to plan our steps, our, our path, based on the available equivalent statements. And so on an exam, you'll have limited availability. When you're doing homework, you, you have a lot more availability. But you, you can only use what's available. There may be more than one correct way. Okay, just like there's more than one way to get from Reedley to Fresno. These, these multi-step problems can be done one conversion at a time. I don't recommend that, but it can be done that way. I would encourage you to learn to combine the steps into one equation. Overall, it's going to work out better that way. And remember, the reason that we're learning dimensional analysis here is not so that we can convert kilograms into pounds or something. It's so that we can do stoichiometry later and easily convert, you know, new units like pressure units and things. So we're learning a technique. So let's do another example. Um, this one involving just metric units. Volume of a can of Diet Coke is 355 milliliters. What's the volume in centiliters? Now, to do that, we need to be able to call on the uh, metric prefixes. Centi is um, a unit that I asked you to memorize, and milli is a unit that I asked you to memorize. So centi has the abbreviation C. It means 0 0.01 or 10 to the minus 2. And these are the ones that I'm going to be using when I illustrate how to do this. So 10 to the minus 2. And milli means 10 to the minus 3. So we need to have those. The great thing about the metric system is with, with just the knowledge of what the prefixes are, you can convert all the units back and forth, upside down. You just do anything instead of having to look up all these different random things. So let's do this one. So problem-solving strategies, we always read through the whole problem. I already read it. And then we're going to pick out the numbers. So in this situation, we just have one number in the problem, 355 milliliters. So that's obviously where we're going to start, because you have to start with some sort of a number. So we're starting with milliliters. And then what's the question? What's the volume in centiliters? That's what we need to find out, is centiliters. We're figuring out where we're starting and where we're ending up, and then we have to figure out how to get there. So here we have two metric units of volume, milliliter and centiliter. And if we look at them, they each have a prefix, centi and milli. When you have two prefixes, that means you need two steps. It can be done in one step, but it's just much more complicated, and it's not worth figuring out how to do it. You just do it in two steps. So what, we're, what we'll always do is we'll go from um, this unit with a prefix, and we'll go to the unit without the prefix. So we'll go from milliliters to liters, and then from liters to centiliters, because each of those steps is going to be simple and straightforward. So when you have an, a metric conversion, um, like if we had um, grams to kilograms. Then we would look at those units and say, okay, this one doesn't have a prefix, this one has a prefix. One of them has a prefix, it's a one-step problem. In this example, number three, though, we have one, two prefixes, and so we're going to do it in two steps. So milliliters to liters to centiliters. Now that we have our path, we can start writing our equation. So 355 milliliters. The path has two arrows. We're going to have two fractions. Any questions about the path, the map? That is critical, deciding, OK, where am I going? I'm going from here to here to here. And that sets up the rest of it. So if you can get that, 
then the rest of it is just going to follow a pattern that we do. Yes? What do I mean by prefix? That's a good question. Okay, so the unit liter mm -hmm. is um, like here in the middle. That's the base unit of volume. When we put a, a lowercase, well, actually, it's not always lowercase. When we put a letter in front of it, that's the metric prefix, and that changes the size. So milli makes it a thousand times smaller. Mega makes it a million times larger. So that's what I mean by prefix. That's a good question. So our path, milliliters to liters to centiliters, these are the units that are going to go on top here. <coughs> milliliters is already written, milliliters to liters to centiliters. It's just the same as the path. And we can think of Dora chanting, you know, milliliters, liters, centiliters, milliliters, liters, centiliters. So we get those, we get those filled in. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of the units that we don't want. And we do that by dividing. So we're going to take milliliter here, and we want to put it in the denominator over here. We want to put it in the bottom, because milliliter divided by milliliter is 1. And we can cancel that out, and it doesn't affect the value of our measurement. Then here, we're going to take liters and divide down there. Someone's calling me from Utica, New York. I have no idea who that is, so I'm going to ignore them. If it's important, they'll leave a message. So the leaders cancel out. Now we've got all of our units worked out, and that's what dimensional analysis does. We use the units to tell us what to do. Now we're going to put in the numbers to make these things true. So each of these things, we have to have what's on the top be equal to what's on the bottom. And with the metric prefixes, what we do is we, we find the prefix, here it's milli, and we ask ourselves, okay, what does milli mean? And we looked at that table in the previous slide. Milli, it means 10 to the minus 3, and centi means 10 to the minus 2. And why do they mean that? Because people decided that's what they meant. Okay, that, that's why it's on the memorization quiz, you just have to memorize it. So here what we're going to do with the milliliters and the liters, down here we have milliliters. On the other side of the line, we're going to write the number meaning of that prefix. We don't want to put the prefix and the number together, because the prefix is like a nickname, and you don't say the person's nickname and their given name and their last name. You use the nickname or the given name, right? My son Tommy, you know, we call him Tommy all the time, Tommy Kawagoa. His given name is Thomas Kawagoa, but we don't call him Thomas Tommy. That's silly, right? So we're not going to put 10 to the minus third and milli together. We're going to put 10 to the minus third on the other side. So you can think of leader as being like the last name. Here's your given name and here's the nickname. Millie's a lot easier to write than 10 to the minus third. Any questions about that? This is not the only way to convert metric units, but it seems to be the most straightforward and it doesn't have exceptions. And so you can learn the pattern and you can be successful in converting the units. Over here in the next one, centi liters and just plain old liters. Well, we need a number here because a centiliter doesn't equal a liter. So we know what centi means. So we're, here we've got centi and we're going to write what it means on the bottom. Because in this dimensional analysis, these fractions that we're multiplying by are equal to 1. They don't look like the number 1. But one centiliter is equal to 10 to the minus 2 liters. 10 to the minus 3 liters is equal to 1 milliliter. So let's put some 1s in there, because it bothers people sometimes when there isn't a number there. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. 
And then the 10 to the minus 3rd and the 10 to the minus 2, look, those look a little weird, and you're like, I don't know how to do that in my calculator. We'll throw a 1 on there. 1 times 10 to the minus 3rd. Oh, that's scientific notation. We learned how to do that. And over here, 1 times 10 to the minus 2. So now we've got the equation all set up, and then it's a matter of correctly communicating with your calculator. So these are the keystrokes that I would recommend for this. We're going left to right, we multiply by the top, we divide by the bottom. So 3, 5, 5 times 1, e, e, change sign, 3. Now if you want to, some people do, if you want to divide by 1, and multiply by 1, that's fine. Some people find it just helps them. And then um, we're going to divide by 1, e, e, change sign 2, oops, equals, and you should end up with 35.5 as your answer. This is what the calculator should show you. So then up here we're going to write 35.5 the unit is centiliter and always a nice touch to box it or circle it to say hey this is my answer amongst all this scribbling. Is your calculator giving you the right number? Calculators are kind of squirrely sometimes. You should have either an EE button or an EXP button on your calculator. So here's a concept check. Um, what data would you need to estimate the money you would spend on gasoline to drive your car from New York to Los Angeles? Provide estimates of values in a sample calculation. Here is dimensional analysis applied to real life. This is something that could happen, right? You're going on a long trip, and you need to have a clue how much gas is going to cost for the trip. So what sorts of things would we need to know? We'd need to know the distance. Anybody know how far it is from New York to Los Angeles? 4,000, 5,000 miles. Let's, let's say 4,500. We need to know the distance. What else do we need to know? Price the price of gas. So maybe we'll just say $4 a gallon. So $4 per gallon. What else do we need to know? The gas consumption of your car. How many miles per gallon do you get? Well, that's going to depend on what kind of a car you're driving. Let's say we're taking my husband's Honda Fit. He's a little blue Honda Fit, and it gets about, gets about 40 miles per gallon. It's pretty nice. Miles per gallon. Now we're familiar with seeing that as 40 mpg miles per gallon, but it's better to do it as a vertical fraction. So it wants a sample calculation. What are we trying to, f we need to know what number to start with and what number to end up with. So, go ahead. So we're gonna let's look at the units because we, we we made we've got three numbers here. They're all estimates, and interestingly, they all have fours in them. Three three numbers here. Let's look at the units. Here we've got miles. This is dollars per gallon. This is miles per gallon. These last two look like they could be conversion factors, don't they? We're probably going to use those as conversion factors, and we're probably going to need to start with the miles. 
as just kind of a good um, strategy doesn't always work, but most of the time, and most of the time is pretty good. Okay, so we're going to make our little path here. We're going to start with miles. And what are we trying to find? How much you would spend on gas. So the cost, right? Dollars. So then let's look at what we've got here. Starting with miles, this is going to be our initial number, and these are going to be our conversion factors. From miles, we could convert to what unit? gallons because we've got this guy. So we can go from miles to gallons. And then this one is going to allow us to convert between gallons and dollars. Right? This is creating the path based on the relationships that we have available. I can't go directly from miles to gallons I mean, sorry, miles to dollars with what I know. I just can't. I need to go to gallons first. Any questions about how I figure that map out? Once you get the map, we're just going to follow the pattern. Miles to gallons to dollars. Miles to gallons to dollars. Okay, we've got two arrows. We're going to have two fractions, two conversion factors. So I'm just going to leave 4,500 miles where it is. And so I'm going to have two factors here. And we're going to put the units from the path. Yeah, we're all just coughing and sneezing. Isn't it fabulous? Miles to gallons. And then over here we're going to have dollars. Miles to gallons to dollars. In this second term, we want the unit from the first term on the bottom because we want these guys to cancel out. And then gallon is going to go into the bottom of the third term because we want it to cancel out. There's no thinking about should I multiply by the mileage or divide by the mileage. We're just going to put the units in. Now we look at our relationships and put the numbers in. So here, four and the dollar went together. Dollar's a, a weird unit. It comes before. So I'm going to move this dollar sign over. Four dollars. Four dollars per gallon. How many gallons? One. And then down here we have 40 miles per gallon. Are we going to put the 40 on the top or the bottom? We're going to put it on the bottom because it needs to go, needs to stay with miles. And then if we, if we want to have a number on the top, it's going to be one. That tells us that for every one gallon of gas, we can go 40 miles. Now we use our calculator, and we just go left to right, times the top, divide by the bottom. So 4500, zero, zero. I'm going to divide by... 40 and multiply by 4 and the result is going to have the unit of dollars and my calculator is showing me 45 450 dollars any questions Is that a practical calculation? Somebody's shaking his head. Why not? It's not practical? Okay. Pardon me? Okay. You know, if you're not going on a trip, it's not practical. But if you're, if you're going on a trip and you want to know how much it's going to cost, I mean, this is how we decide. My, my parents live in Minnesota. And with six kids, there's no way we can afford to fly there. And so then you figure out, okay, how much is it going to cost in gas? And then you have to add in, you know, hotels and food. And, and you're looking at that and like, nope, not going this summer. Maybe next year. <clears throat> All 
Okay, finally made it to the end of that section.